with the secondary for Chuck Pagano's Colts. Rick Toller, Darius Butler, two of the top three corners, are out because of injury. Butler hurt last week against Buffalo. And Dejon Smith, who is a rookie third rounder, is on IR and he can return later in the year. But they're down corners two, three, and four. So even though they get Mathis back for the first time in over a year, a very emotional return for him, they're going to have their hands full of Brandon Marshall and the Jets offense, which will be on the field first. Indianapolis won the toss, deferred to the second half. So Pat McAfee, who led the NFL in touchbacks last year, will get things started. Hopes trying to avoid another 0-2 start. Jets trying to open up the Todd Bowles era, their new head coach at 2-0. Off we go from Indianapolis. And as per usual, it's a no-return McAfee kickoff through the uprights, in fact. And Ryan Fitzpatrick will start from the 20-yard line. 32 years old from Harvard. Been around the league for a long time. Been a lot of places, too. As a matter of fact, four different teams the last four years. When you look down at those numbers, at 34, 55, and one record. John, you get the sense this is a great fit for Ryan Fitzpatrick. It's the best team he's been the quarterback of, Mike. They have a veteran offensive line. He's been with Chan Gailey from his days in Buffalo. He's not a novice executing this system. On first down, first throw. It's complete to Eric Decker. The eight of a dozen is he's taken to the sideline by Eric Walden in front of Fitzpatrick. Real solid. Ferguson, the left tackle, Mangle, they came in the same draft, been there for a decade. Those other three players have won world championships at their previous stops. Handling the ball, Decker just caught one. Brandon Marshall comes over in the trade from Chicago. Chris Ivory, powerful, punishing runner, shares the running duties with Bilal Powell. 12 on the first one, Ivory on the second one. And around the edge for Ivory for about three or four yards. We have a penalty flag thrown on the play. And it's the first Monday night game. Second game overall for John Hussey as a referee. He was a line judge in the league for 13 years. Worked the Tennessee-Tampa game in week one. And he wears the white hat here tonight. There are two fouls on the play, both by the same team. Illegal hands to the face, defense. That penalty is declined. Unnecessary roughness, number 33, defense. That penalty is enforced, 15 yards, automatic first down. That's the ex-Jet Dwight Lowry that is going to allow New York to move the ball close to midfield in two snaps. Take a look at Lowry, 33. I think it's a good call, Mike. This Indianapolis defense has got to get off the field. Struggled last week. Struggled the last two timeouts if you go back to their playoff loss to the Patriots. They have not been able to stop the run, and they don't want to get into that business tonight against Chris Ivory because he'll run it right down your throat. In cold territory from the 49, Fitzpatrick will throw it complete to his receiver, Chris Wusu, flagged down as he has stopped inside the 45. It's a gain of five if it holds. Three plays, two flags. Pass interference, offense number 87. Ten-yard penalty remains first down. They're all over that of late. We saw that a lot in our game with Philly and Atlanta last week. These are running plays with built-in quick screens. If the box count is heavy, they can throw the ball out there. Good call, Eric Decker blocking before the ball is out. I'd like to see all those passes eliminated, Mike. If you want to throw it, drop back and throw it. You're not a big fan of the bubble screen oh, era. That was four years ago, but I'm tired of seeing those. <laughs> so it makes it first and 20. Chris Ivory, the running back, splits to the top. It's an empty backfield for Fitzpatrick. His pass is complete to Brandon Marshall, who's tackled by Vontae Davis. We'll see those two head-to-head -head a whole bunch tonight. I want to show you the rest of Davis' teammates. Two rookies, a third and a fifth rounder out of Stanford up front. Rookie defensive front. 
odd for a team with championship aspirations. Dequell Jackson and Jarrell Freeman in the middle. Trent Cole came over in free agency from the Eagles. I talked about the injuries in the secondary at the top. So that brings Jalil Brown on the left of your screen to a starting role for the third time in his NFL career. His first start since he was a chief in 2012. Second and 15, Powell is the back, he's into block, and the pass is complete to Decker. And he gets a whole bunch of the penalty yardage back. Jets are going to have third and a long yard coming up. I like Bilal Powell. He sees the blitz, he comes across the formation in this shotgun formation, picks it up, and Fitzpatrick is on the money again. Third down is short. Keep an eye on Brandon Marshall. You're going to see a lot of one-on-one -on -one isolations against Vontae Davis, the star corner of the Colts. They had their battles in Miami. Here they go at it at the bottom of the screen. Third and one. The fullback Bohannon leads. Ivory does not get there. Henry Anderson, who had an outstanding game in his NFL debut, the third-round rookie out of Stanford, good start to game two. Henry Anderson, not often you see two rookies starting this early in the season. You'd figure those two men went to Stanford, Mike. They know how to play the game. They were trained in the 3-4 multiple front. They've been quick studies and quick contributors. Great play by Anderson. Big stop for the Colts defense. Jets were rolling early, despite being fourth and three at the Colts 42. Brian Quigley comes in to try to kill it inside the 10. Griff Whalen back deep, catches it right at the 10. 32-yard punt on net. And the Colts and Andrew Luck will take over when you come back. City, a great monument, all scrubbed and looking beautiful. What a great day and night in Indy. Our coverage from Spider Cam is brought to you by Direct TV. See the names of the Colts Ring of Honor. The name of Jeff Saturday is covered up for now. It'll go up there right after Marshall Falk and be unveiled at halftime. Our ESPN colleague, great center for Peyton Manning in those many Colts games to be honored later. First play for Andrew Luck is a throw and it's incomplete. Intended for T.Y. Hilton, Quinton Copels was pressuring the Colts quarterback. So here's Andrew Luck. Every game of Colt, he started the number one overall pick. Been to the Pro Bowl each of his first three seasons. Career start number 50 here tonight. He does it all, Mike. He's been hit too much. They got to run the ball and get some balance in this offense. Or they're in trouble. Second down from the 11. Here goes Frank Gore. Hey, a first down to the 23-yard line, but there is a flag down where the hole opened up for the former 49er. Holding offense, number 83, half the distance to the goal, second down. It's Dwayne Allen, the tight end. Let's show you the Colts. The guy's blocking up front. Anthony Costanzo, the left tackle, has been the constant. The other four have changed a lot in Lux three years, including Harriman, just in from Philadelphia as a free agent signing. Allen and Fleener both caught eight touchdowns. Gore will handle the running. T.Y. Hilton hurt his knee in Buffalo. Concerned if he was going to play. Practice Saturday, he makes it. It's strange to see Andre Johnson not in a Texans uniform. He trades shades of blue and is now with the Colts. Penalties hurt Indianapolis last week in the first drive of the game. That's a big one backed up. So it's second and 14 on half the distance, right back to Gore. He'll get about two or three to Mario Davis out of that linebacker spot for the Jets with a stop. These are the situations that head coach Todd Bowles lives for. Famous for blitzing five or more on third and long in Arizona. He has the horses to do it here with the Jets. They've also got two outstanding linebackers, Mike, that never leave the field. Bowles didn't have these two linebackers in Arizona, but David Harris, 52 and 56, Demario Williams will not come off the field ever. It's his third and 11. It's a free play for Luck, and it's complete for a gain of four. Andre Johnson throwing out of bounds, and the official on that side throws his hat. That means it's a penalty add-on 15. 
for the late hit by Buster's screen, the nickel. He throws his hat because he had already thrown his flag to call the first penalty. This Andrew Lux hard count. Leonard Williams should know better. Haven't seen him at Stanford, but when you least expect it, Andrew Luck rocks you with a hard count. There are two fouls on the play, both by the same team. Offside, nose guard, that penalty is declined. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 41. That penalty reports 15 yards, automatic, first down. So that's a big one. Keep the penalty because of it. Andre Johnson, the catch screen, hung on too long. Once he got to the white, he threw him down. They tacked on the 15. On the Jets free agent signee, a terrific nickel corner. A lot of folks wanted him because he's so good at that specific spot. So from the 29, Luck goes to Gore, goes left, and there's Gore for the first down. To the 40-yard line, gain of 11, yet another flag is down. This is getting ridiculous. Holding. Offense number 74, 10-yard penalty, first down. Left tackle Anthony Costanzo. Second time at the point of attack, we have holding. Left tackle 74, Costanzo. I'll let these guys play a little bit. You see, we've had nine plays. I think we've had five <laughs> flags thrown. A couple with multiple fouls. The court comes out from it. Josh Robinson, rookie out of Mississippi State, is it? From the 19, here goes the rookie out of the SEC. Only gained two yards. It's Muhammad Wilkerson. Gets first round pick in 2011. Who made that tackle? Forms a good group up front. Wilkerson's 25. David Harrison, 26. Leonard Williams, the rookie, sixth overall pick out of USC. They're good up front. John told you about Davis and Harris, the linebackers who are constants. And in the secondary, the suspended free agency to go get Antonio Cromartie on one corner, Revis on the other, bring in Gilchrist, San Diego, and Buster Screen, the nickel, when he's in there as well. It is second and eight. The Jets bring that pressure. Luck feels it, throws it. It's deflected and intercepted into the hands of Calvin Pryor. Pryor is inside the 10, and the Jets will have first and goal. Turnovers. The New York Jets rarely got a turnover last year, Mike. That's number six in just the second game of the season for Todd Bowles' Jets. It's going to be a blitz with a single slot at the top of the screen. The Jets stay in a four-across zone trap defense. Tip ball in the middle of the field, and off goes Calvin Pryor. Pressure and muddy coverages confuse the best quarterbacks. That's why Todd Bowles is the head man of the New York Jets. Turnovers have been a huge winning edge for the Jets, something they did not get last year, Mike. Andre Johnson's hand on it. You see Luck read his lips, my fault. 29 yards on the interception return for Pryor. Great chance for the Jets to get an early lead. Slant Decker broken up at the last second. They scored on one of those slants to Decker last week against Cleveland. I believe Monte Davis got a finger on it. Decker had 24 touchdowns in his last two years as a Denver Bronco. Likes this new system. They Give the quarterback some one-on-one -on -one hand signal opportunities. That time, Vontae Davis makes a great play. John, you mentioned the takeaways. The Jets struggled in that department the last two years. Only 28. Five last week. One here in the first quarter. Trying to bank it with a touchdown. Ivory is stopped as his Colts defense stands up a bit. to quote Jackson the tackle. will have third and goal. The New York Jets on third down love no back formations. Almost 80% of the time, the Jets use a no back operation on third down. Let's see if the Colts come after that formation should they get it. Mathis has just checked into the game, Mike. First time, John. Nickel situation, probably how we'll see him used tonight.
third and goal. Fitzpatrick, pressure, fires from Marshall, Davis all over him, and the flag is down. So that star battle between those two men that we talked about on that first drive. Before the pass, holding, defense number 21, five-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Seam there and flag. Davis is in trouble. This is where you like a big back like Chris Ivory. On an early down, he sets up such a nasty play action opportunity. And if you crowd the box, you have Marshall one on one at the top of the screen, and you have the veteran Decker at the bottom. Dealer's choice for Ryan Fitzpatrick. First and goal, Ivory stop Colts D-line. John playing much better in the early snaps here than they did in the game in Buffalo last week. I think they got the message from defensive coordinator Greg Minuski, rookie David Perry out of Stanford working against Nick Mangold. When you can beat Nick Mangold, you deserve to be the starter in the National Football League. Good work by the fifth round pick out of Stanford. Second and goal, Fitzpatrick, Decker, underneath for the touchdown. This is a veteran offensive football team at every position. They know how to play, and they know how to play together. That time, Decker comes in short motion and beats Vontae Davis across the formation. Decker's proved he can play with Tim Tebow, Peyton Manning. He can play in any offense especially good in red zone situations. 6-3, so good there, working inside. Saw 16 snaps in the slot. That big body creating good angles. Already more extra points missed in the NFL this year than there were all of last year. It's been pushed back, as you know. 33-yard try is knocked through by Nick Folk. For the Colts' first drive, Andrew Luck felt some pressure. The tip by Andre Johnson. The pick by Calvin Pryor. Then Fitzgerald to Decker. 7-0, New York. Chuck Pagano made his name in this league as a secondary coach. Matter of fact, he and Todd Bowles were both secondary coaches together in Cleveland over a decade ago. So the head coach is over there with his DBs, knowing he's got a lot of young defensive backs tonight. And Vontae Davis, the veteran. So they're working on what Fitzpatrick and the Jets have up their sleeve after a very opportunistic short drive caused by the turnover. Jets 7-0, Folk with a high kickoff. It'll be Tyler Varga, the rookie out of Yale, on the return. And the Canadian-born Yaley takes it to the 24-yard line. So Andrew Luck and the Colts get swing number two at it. First one didn't work so well. The screen blitz off the corner, got to him, and he threw a pick. John, at the beginning, we talked about the similarity in opponents. Buffalo, Rex Ryan brings pressure, and Andrew Luck and his team didn't do too well against that up in Orchard Park. Poor start with the interception against pressure here tonight. This drive, their second, starts with the 24. Gore ran into his tight end cleaner, bounced off him, runs through a few jets, and is very close to the first down. That's the third really good run by Gore, but take a look at the blitz, Mike. It's going to be a cross-dog blitz by the linebackers. They bring a slot corner and drop a defensive tackle. They create confusion. When they blitz, it's not always man-to-man. -man. Sometimes it's a zone blitz. Sometimes they come from the field. Sometimes it's from the boundary. You name it, Bowles has it. Play action for Lux, second and short. Throw across the middle is complete. There goes Dante Moncrief to the Jets' 36. First down and a gain of 31. You get a good run by Frank Gore, and it gives you the play-action pass. And that's the biggest concern Todd Bowles had was the shot plays. Play-action pass, deep square in at the top of the screen. Cromartie's late to line up. 
and he's beaten badly. We got to keep an eye on for Marty, who left last week with a bad knee, Mike. Didn't look good there. They feared that it was an ACL early on. Very happy to find out it was a sprain. He returned to practice late this week in New Jersey. And in action tonight. Extra day didn't hurt his recovery. Four up the middle. Frank Gore takes it inside the red zone. I love what Indianapolis is doing. Excuse me, Mike. We talked about that jam front. They cover the center in both guards. Watch the scheme. They're going to pull the onside guard, and they have the right play call. Look at that kick out block and a beautiful read by Frank Gore, who's had four terrific runs. Kill, kill, kill. I know. 170. Uh, first down, they go to Josh Robinson, giving Gore a break. And Robinson, the rookie running back. Finishes the run, a gain of eight down to the 11-yard line. Offensive coordinator Pep Hamilton showing a lot of strange formations. This is an unbalanced line. They're going to pull the offside guard, Todd Harriman's, and Josh Robinson bounces it to the outside, well blocked play. Extra big bodies in there again. Second and two. Luck towards the end zone. Incomplete. He's trying to get it to the tackle. Eligible Joe Wrights at work Saturday in practice. Almost worked here tonight. I think Andrew Luck put that play in for me, Mike. A reverse pivot. Spider two Y banana to an offensive tackle. Are you kidding me? It's an unbalanced line, and Andrew Luck was hoping to catch the Jets asleep. Haven't seen a spider two Y banana to a tackle. Tyler Varga comes in the backfield, and the Jets take time out. Here with 4-12 to go. John, this uh, it's early. It's an important drive for Indianapolis just to get settled in here because I think all these players are asking questions of themselves. That Buffalo team hit them hard and kind of took a little bit of the wind out of their seals. And I was talking to Dwayne Allen, the tight end for the Colts today. He said... We need to come out different. We watched the tape. That wasn't the team that we worked with all training camp. They didn't recognize the group they saw on film. Well, Andrew Luck's getting in his huddle, Mike, and there's some new players at key positions. Andre Johnson has got to make himself a household name here in Indianapolis. It's, it's hard. He feels the pressure to deliver right away. Same with Frank Gore. Right guard Todd Harriman's came over from Philadelphia. Let's see what Andrew Luck does 52. with his hand signals and his snap count on third down. Varga remains in the back. Chess game is done. Real game begins. It's luck. It's Enzo for T.Y. Hilton. Terrell Revis on the island with the coverage. No flag and a field goal attempt coming. I love this. It's a hand signal, Andrew Luck. It's a slot combination. He sees the blitz coming. He changes the route. He has his two best receivers, Andre Johnson and T.Y. Hilton. Problem is they're working against one of the great ones I've seen, Darrell Revis. Nice work. That's what you previewed for us earlier with all the hand signals that these guys do. From quarterback to receiver. One of the best all-time kickers, Adam Vinatieri from 29. Off the upright, no good. So Vinatieri, who did not score last week, they went for two, the one touchdown they scored, didn't kick an extra point, missed the field goal attempt from 52. Here in the Dome, these are usually money in the bank. The bank's closed. Boy, it's rare. Adam Vinatieri missed one field goal all of last year. That was the last week of the season in Tennessee. He's missed his first two this year, and to miss from inside of 30, you have to go back to the 2007 season, the last time Adam Vinatieri missed a field goal inside of 30 yards. So the Jets take over at the 20-yard line with Fitzpatrick in their third drive. Off the hands of Decker, and incomplete. It'll be second down. John, you mentioned Chan Gailey earlier, multiple times a head coach in the National Football League with Dallas and with Buffalo. 
and they're in Buffalo. His quarterback was Ryan Fitzpatrick, and now they're reunited. I don't think a lot of people know how much they got done. Fitzpatrick threw for over 3,000 yards all three seasons, 23 or more touchdowns all three years, but he's got a much better supporting cast and offensive line. I expect him to play better here than he did with the Bills. Let's come in. Jordan Verner chasing Fitzpatrick. He's taking off and gets tripped up with a loss of a couple of yards. Henry Anderson will get credit for that sack. First for the rookie. Jordan Verner, former first round pick. Been disappointing. Here comes the big boys. Here comes Robert Mathis. Third down and 11. Let's see if he has that patented get off. 111 career sacks. He needs one to bypass his old teammate, Dwight Freeney. Love to see him get it tonight on Monday Night Football. Four-game suspension, then injured his Achilles, as Lisa told you at the beginning. That's why he missed the rest of last year. Didn't play week one in Buffalo. Seeing spot duty here tonight in these pass rush situations. Spins and puts the pressure on Fitzpatrick, and that pass is incomplete. Mathis didn't get the sack, but the pressure came inside. And forced it out early. Trent Cole coming in as well. Well, Mathis comes back. He's got the spin move against the Brickishaw Ferguson. Hard man to beat. Mathis can beat you with speed. He sets up that speed move. Here's Quigley. Kick away from... Ryan Quigley, it's 41 yards, and Griff Whalen going to fair catch it at the 40-yard line. Grantry Luck back on the field. Slow starts for the Colts quarterback tonight. Seven-nothing Jets lead here in Indianapolis. The home of Andrew Luck was the home of Peyton Manning. This is Luck's 50th start. Most touchdown passes through 50 games. Marino Warner. Manning, Johnny Unitas back in that era where they didn't throw that much. Such how good he was. Carson Palmer. Andrew Luck, his meter is on 88 touchdowns as he plays his 50th here tonight. So we'll see if Luck can have a big night and get to the same point where Manning and kill, Unitas kill, kill. were. 56, Two all-time Colts quarterbacks. What 70? What's this drive starts the 41. Josh Robinson takes it, runs it left. And he'll be stopped by that Jets defensive line. We see what Andrew Luck did there. He saw the weak safety come down. He killed that weak running play to a strong running play. And once again, the Jets rejected. New York has outstanding run defenders. Important that Indianapolis is persistent with the running game. On second and ten. Luck taking off the spot and out of the backfield. Robinson thrown down by David Harris, minimizing the game. Those are the two linebackers, Harris and Davis, that John always points to when we watch the Jets' defense. Well, Harris seems to lead the Jets in tackles every year. He's comfortable in any situation against the run or the pass. Here he is covering the rookie right out of the backfield. What a heck of a player, David Harris. Good to see him re-signed as a Jet. All but that one year where he missed five games with an ankle injury. He's been their top tackler. This is third and nine. Here comes the pressure from the Jets. Luck hangs in, puts it up top, and it is nearly intercepted by Marcus Gilchrist. So the Jets pressure. The Colts yet to find a way to handle it. Plus to Mario Davis. It's these two linebackers that are wreaking havoc on the Colts tonight. He's unaccounted for. I think Josh Robinson blew a pickup. I'm surprised Frank Gore is not in the game. But Robinson blew that pickup, and here's Curley. Pat McAfee, one of the top punters in the league. He saw a change direction there to try to give the return man a bad look to which direction the kick's going to go. Fair caught by Curley at the six-yard line. Good job by a great kicker, McAfee. Well, our Monday Night Lights, every time we go to a town, want to shine the spotlight on a great high school football program. Cardinal Ritter here in Indianapolis. A couple of state championships to their name. Coach Ty Hunt. Team's made it to the state championship four times in the last decade. The 15 seniors in that team that are here tonight get a chance to 
get on the field before the game. Part of our Monday Night Countdown show as they did a demonstration. Saw one of their selfies there as they got to see the best in the business, the guys they aspire to be like someday. Great to go to each city and work with the NFL and the home teams to celebrate high school football. And great part of Americana. Cardinal Ritter, we salute you tonight. Ivory on the carry. Gets it to the 13-yard line. I love it, Mike. You keep the game strong by supporting the young players and the coaches that coach them. Great to see them out here tonight. You get a chance, go watch a high school game, support youth sports across the country. I love that. Nothing like a Friday night, go to a high school game. Nothing like yeah. it. Start your weekend off right. Sure. Minute left here in this first quarter. The Jets trying to get to 2-0. Leading the Colts 7-0. Ivory goes straight ahead. He's a battering ram of a back. Gains three yards and sets up third and short for New York. And Kellen Davis, you never know who's going to block the backside. Kellen Davis comes across the formation, then he comes back and blocks the backside. Chan Gailey has a lot of bells and whistles in this offense, how he blocks the backside. Third down and short, man-to-man -man situation. Brandon Marshall, bottom of the screen against Vontae Davis. Going to be the matchup for the night. This is what you said, three receivers to one side, the top, and Marshall against Davis down here. Will Fitzpatrick work this side? Looks that way, goes that way, and got Marshall for a first down and more. And there goes Brandon Marshall, great run after the catch, into Colts territory, down to the 42-yard line. Well, Vontae Davis playing zone coverage, Jumped into the flat, and a good heads-up play by Brandon Marshall, adjusting his route. 42-yarder to end the quarter. Jets on the move and on top, 7-0. Well, it's a good start to the season so far for this Jets offense. 38 points, their first five quarters. They lead 7-0. Second quarter begins here in Indy. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Lisa Salters with you from Lucas Oil Stadium. First down play action for Fitzpatrick. Thought about pitching it, decides to slide. Gets to the 36. Let's check in with Lisa Salters. Well, Mike, John was talking about the matchup of the night. Brandon Marshall and Vontae Davis. The two know each other very well. They were teammates with the Dolphins for two seasons earlier in their careers. So as Davis told us, they had a lot of practice battles in Miami. We asked Marshall what he expected. A lot of what we're already seeing. He said it's going to be very chippy between the two. He said Davis is probably going to push me in the back a couple times, talk some trash, go a little extra after the whistle. He said, I'm just going to try to ignore him, Mike, and walk back to the huddle. Easy to say. Brandon's been better at that. There's a flag here. He'll pull the plug on second and four. Full start. Offense number 47. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Jets Kellen Davis, their tight end. Kellen Davis probably wondering, what am I doing lined up as a wide receiver? <laughs> Davis hasn't caught many passes in the last two or three years. Clearly, he was a decoy there and probably over there asking a the coach, don't put me out there again. It's been his first five years in Chicago. He was with Seattle in 2013. Last year, didn't catch a ball in his six games with the Lions. This is second and nine for Fitzpatrick. Crossing underneath and the pass was incomplete. Intended for Quincy Inunua, the first-year player out of Nebraska, who can give the Jets a lot of different looks when he plays in this offense. Nobody knows what Inunua is. Is he a tight end? Is he a wide receiver? You'll see him block on counter plays. He has the ability to run down the field. And on third down and nine, important that Indianapolis finds their pass rush. Robert Mathis back in at right end, 98. Colt showing pressure up the middle. Fitzpatrick, long shot downfield, lots of blue shirts. Well covered by the Colts, it was intended for Chris Owusu. And on fourth down, the Jets will punt the ball again. Well, here comes those linebackers right up the middle. You're going to see Bilal Powell step up nicely. 
but the coverage down the field is very good. You see it's zone coverage, Mike. A lot of people think every time you blitz, you play man-to-man. -man. Not so with Greg Minuski and Todd Bowles. You'll see a lot of pressure with zone coverage behind it. Quigley for the third time tonight. End over end kick. Will be down to really just go out of bounds at the five yard line. Whalen chose not to catch it. And terrific job by Quigley pinning Andrew Luck and the Colts back deep. I don't know if you remember the library name at Dayton, but I remember Bird Library at Syracuse. It was quiet. It's quiet in this stadium when Andrew Luck is on the field. That's great because he has one of the best hard counts, and we can all listen in to why he's so special at the line of scrimmage. A lot of different snap counts, though, Mike. You have a standard count. Most of the time, you go on one. You'll hear him, blue 80, right. blue 80, set hut, blue 80, blue 80, set hut, and then he'll mix it up. He'll use a quick count. He'll just walk up there, set hut. But when he uses that hard count, it just sounds exactly like his standard count. Blue 80, blue 80, set hot! I mean, he can really rock you with these hard counts. That's why you got to concentrate, especially on third down and late in games when your concentration goes away a little bit. 170! First down, and the run with Gore is stopped. Gets on the other side of the defensive line, and they lose the yard. What's the value of having a great hard count? Well you got to mix your snap count up, Mike. Number one, you want your offense to get off the ball mm -hmm. and win at the line of scrimmage. Right. That's the key. Secondly, you want to keep these pass rushers off balance. You don't want these guys getting a jump on you. And thirdly, you want to gather information with your snap count to see what that free safety is doing, read the coverage, see the front. Andrew Luck uses his snap count as a weapon. Listen carefully. Second and 11, he'll throw right sides, complete for the minimal gain as Moncrief is swarmed by Revis at the 10-yard line. So just short one gets him third and about seven. And most importantly, you got to get the play called quickly in the huddle, get out of the huddle at the line of scrimmage so you can use these dummy snap counts to read the defense and change the play if necessary. And you see they're out of the huddle with 21 on the play clock. Third and six, here comes the pressure from the Jets, picked up this time. Now, with everybody covered downfield, Luck gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. And it will bring up four down. Calvin, fourth down, Calvin Pace was the one who finally knocked him down. Well, part of beating a blitz is you have to pass block, and everybody is one-on-one -on -one in pass protection. They bring five New York Jets. Actually, Harrison spied out of there at the end, but the push in the pocket too much for Andrew Luck who has to throw the ball What's away. a flag thrown late over in that pile of players that we didn't see? So let's see what it was. The Jets were trying to point that Luck intentionally grounded the ball. He threw it in the middle of the field there where it seemed like there was a Colts eligible receiver, but we'll check that out. But again, it's a third down stop for New York. Intentional grounding. Number 12 on the offense. After this is the goal, that penalty carries a loss of down, fourth down. I didn't see that at all, Mike. I don't agree with that call, but there's McAfee backed up. Let's look for T.Y. Hilton. He was crossing there. His luck gets up and throws it. There's Hilton there, and there's the pass. I don't see that. Too many flags. Not a huge impact, just five yards because it's half the distance to the goal with the loss of down. McAfee, as you said, John, backed up near his own goal line to kick it out. Gets great hang time on the ball. Really limits opposing returns with direction and hang time. Like that. That's <laughs> such a great kick. That ball was in the air for 5.06 seconds. That's huge. As good as there is in the league, Pat McAfee. ESPN's Monday Night Football, brought to you by GMC. We are professional grade. And by Burger King.
The highlights from Super Bowl three. The Jets, that seminal moment for the NFL, the AFL-NFL merger. Joe Namath, the guarantee and the victory in this 50th anniversary year of the Super Bowl. A lot of reflections. There are 19 different matchups pitting teams who played on Super Sundays. This being one of them. Of course, the Colts in the NFL then moved to the AFC once the merger happened in 1970. And the Jets and Colts went from being on opposite sides of the fence to being in the same division. Bilal Powell, the carry, the 41-yard line. Well, John, this Jets offensive line, very strong, a lot of veterans. At a time where we don't find units that have been together a while, the Jets have two guys in Mangold and Ferguson who anchor a very veteran group. And a few world champions in there. When you look at Willie Colon at right guard, Bobby Carpenter came over to play left guard from Seattle, and Breno Giacomini has also won a world championship. A lot of experience allows him to do a lot of things. Second down and six. And no room there as Powell is stopped. And this Colts defensive line is playing much better this week than they did last. Kendall Langford, Henry Anderson. You see Langford, Anderson, two new Indianapolis Colts that are anchoring this front, doing a nice job getting off blocks. Indianapolis has done a nice job tonight on defense mm -hmm. because the Jets have had very good field position on a few of these drives. It's third and eight, Colts rush four, and Fitzpatrick throws complete to Decker. Into Colts territory for a first down, and a gain of just about 15. Ball comes out at the end, but he was marked down. First down, New York. It's good pass protection. We talked about this veteran offensive line. James Carpenter, Mangold at center, Cologne at right guard. It's a good pocket. It allows Fitzpatrick to see down the field, and Eric Decker. Doing a nice job against Jalil Brown, who's pressed into service. Boy, Indianapolis misses Greg Toller and Darius Butler, the regular starters. Toller's the starting corner, Butler the starting nickel. And the Jets playing these three and four wides, he would be on the field a lot tonight. It's Patrick first down right back to Decker. That's their fifth connection of the night to the 45-yard line. John, you went through it before. Decker was in Denver. Tebow, then Manning had the big numbers. Comes here last year as the number one receiver. Now with Brandon Marshall, he really becomes more of a number two. Kind of a better fit for his skill set at this point. Yes, and he had a hamstring last year, Mike, that really hurt him. I think he tried to come back too soon. Had a lot to prove after signing the big contract. But he's helped. He's playing well right now. Second and six. It's Powell seeking space. And he is stopped. The bottom of that pile again, it's David Perry, 54. He and Anderson continuing to do a good job up front just to get things plugged for Greg Minuski, the defensive coordinator for Indianapolis. Which Mike, he does a lot, and it doesn't matter who he does it with. They've got a rebuilt front four, a number of new characters in the secondary. Once again, a loaded trip formation at the bottom of the screen, and it's Marshall and Davis up. Colts will rush Mathis from the bottom, Trent Cole from the top. Third and six, Fitzpatrick had time. A lot of hand fighting over there. Pass to Marshall incomplete, Bavante Davis was in the cookie jar. And a flag him. You can see it coming a mile away. You play trips formation, and they isolate Brandon Marshall. For the pass, defense. Holding number 21, five-yard penalty, automatic, first down. You can bet that Fitzpatrick is going to throw Marshall the ball. You be the judge. Push it, but I'm sure you can repeat. That's the sixth accepted penalty on the Colts. So with eight and a half left, Jets stay on the move. Colts bring pressure, and Fitzpatrick throwing deep. Davis with the play, two feet down, is it a pick? Yes, Mike Adams! If it stands up, spectacular job 
of the deflection for the interception. That's what the great corners do. They come back after adversity and make a play. Fitzpatrick may have gone to the well too many times. Monte Davis with the tip and the Pro Bowl Mike Adams shows his range. Turnover play. Order automatically reviewed since it's a turnover. Replay confirming that was an interception. And we'll show you the hows and whys of the pick by Mike Adams off the deflection. Vontae Davis in front of Brandon Marshall leading to the interception. We'll get to that in a second. Here are the Colts starting their drive from their own 20. Still scoreless. It's Gore to the right. Frank Gore is running well. Gain of nine. Let's go back to the interception. We'll show you. Watch once the ball is secured there. One foot is already down in the second one to get in. And he maintained control going to the ground. Here you go from pylon cam. Great look. That foot clearly in. And then the other one down. So the feet were no question. And the pick of Fitzpatrick by Mike Adams. Gore again this time is pulled down by Quinton Copels. So he's short of the first down. So Frank Gore forever. Every time we go to San Francisco, you appreciate more and more what he did. The all-time leading rusher in 49ers franchise history there for a decade. Now, here he is in a new place and very happy to be here where he is wanted. He saw San Francisco's changing direction, going in a new course. He feels he still has a lot to bring. He's doing it in a new spot where they're desperate for a solid running game. Third and one, they'll throw here. Gore picked up the pressure, and it's nearly intercepted. Intended for Andre Johnson, Antonio Cromartie on the coverage. And the Colts are 0 for 5 on third down tries here tonight. Well, these Colt receivers have to win. Cromartie all over Andre Johnson on this outside breaking route. Lucky it wasn't intercepted. T.Y. Hilton, Andre Johnson, Dante Moncrief, the rookie Dorsett. Nothing so far tonight. Third straight three and out for the Colts. Last punch for McAfee was 57. Got a lot of pressure. Got hit, but no flag thrown. Kerr caught at the 28-yard line. Three Jets around McAfee, including Muhammad Wilkinson. As the kicker was able to land on both feet. And you hear the explanation. Fans heard it, but didn't agree with it. Pressure from Wilkerson coming in. Jets quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick, no stranger to playing here. He was in the division the last couple of years with Houston and Tennessee, so he's gone up against the Colts defense twice a year the last two. Second interception of the season thrown on his last pass for Fitzpatrick. From the 29, he fights Decker again. What a first half for Decker. 20 yards there. Take him up to six catches in 72 first half yards. Using these open formations to get Decker in there against Dequell Jackson. And it's a mismatch. Take a look at Dequell Jackson playing linebacker, trying to carry Decker up the field in this zone coverage. It's not going to happen. Jets are on to something. So you like their first down play call? Yes, I do. That's the spread system that Chan Gailey brought here. I cheated Decker, a yard fantasy fans. He has uh, 73 yards officially. First and 10, and the screen set up. Here's Chris Ivory. Well read. Snuffed out by Dwight Lowry, the former Jet. You mentioned Fitzpatrick has been around. Seventh round pick. Two seasons, five games played as a rookie with St. Louis, and then on to Cincinnati a couple of seasons in 14 games. Up to Buffalo with Chan Gailey. Most he played through 80 touchdowns up there. In Nashville, a season in 12 games with the Titans. Last year, a season in 12 games with Houston. And here he is as a Jet, throwing two touchdowns in week one, and then a third here tonight. Six different NFL teams below 500 with each of those clubs. Decker again inside the 35 to the 30. Big chunks of yards 
20 on Decker's seventh reception. Well, sometimes you just got to hang in there, and you have to admit he has been relentless. Take a look at the pass protection. He loves this no-back offense. He's accurate, intermediate, and he's accomplished in this offense. I just like the fact he's relentless, Mike. He's never quit. I think he's at the right place at the right time. He's just got to take care of the football. First down, swing it to Powell. Good tracing his footsteps by Trent Cole. And a minimal game there. You talked to Fitzpatrick on the bus when we got here over the weekend. H how do you find this stop for Ryan Fitzpatrick at this point in his career? I think it's great because he knows the coach that's calling the plays in Chan Gailey. He's got a veteran offensive line. He's got veteran receivers. It's an opportunity of a lifetime for him. A lot of guys take advantage of opportunity at the right time. This timing for him, I think, is perfect. He's just got to do a better job taking care of the football. Turnovers have doomed him at some of these stops. Yeah, pass stops, no doubt. Powell, immediate contact by Vontae Davis, who is in some discomfort. And it'll be an injury timeout. The Colts already decimated at the cornerback spot see one of their top defenders shake it up Monte Davis being led back towards the Colts locker room I would assume it's for evaluation of a concussion they came over to the sideline and once they determined that there might be a potential concussion situation team medical personnel and the unaffiliated neurotrauma consultant new to the each sideline this year then they say, if we have to do an evaluation, we're going to do it in a quieter place back in the locker room. So protocol being followed there. Davis heading off. And we have movement up front. Was it Trent Cole? Or did someone induce him? This is on a fraction. Defense number 58. The defender moved first, causing the off offensive player to move. Five-yard penalty. Third down. So I'll make it third and four. Here is the hit on Bilal Powell. You see Davis leading with the face mask and then went down. And in a different day, he may have been put right back in the game a play or two later. Sheldon Price, who's playing NFL defense for the first time in his career, played special teams only last week, replaces Davis. They go right to Marshall, and it's a first down inside the 20-yard line to the 19. Well, that other corner is Eric Patterson, who just got here out of Ball State. Don't know anything about Patterson as an NFL player, but on third down, Ryan Fitzpatrick goes right to him. That's where that Harvard education comes in handy, Mike. You get a corner hurt, you go right after his replacement first down, Jets. John, the Jets should throw the ball all day on the Colts right now. The, the Colts are without their top three corners. Six for six on this drive through the air. They try to run it up the middle with Chris Ivory. And his second effort will gain two yards. So if you were not with us at the top, Greg Toller, starting corner, missed last week in Buffalo with a neck injury, still out. Darius Butler hurt his hip within that game, finished the game, but did not practice at all this week. John Smith, who was a third-round pick, was put on injured reserve, designated to return, so he's out a minimum of eight weeks. And add Davis, their top corner, to that injury list for the moment. And that 145 will probably continue to go up. From the 18, Ivory to quell Jackson the tackle, gain of a yard. And it's almost like offensive coordinator Chan Gailey going to use as much puck as he can to keep Andrew Luck on the sideline. Third down. Coming out of the two-minute drill, I'm sure Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to get the best play possible from Gailey. Maybe his favorite play. Toyota halftime is coming up. Chris Berman back in our studio. We'll have Boomer's final drive. Putting a cap on Sunday number two. Mort and Adam with the insider update and several injuries to update, including some quarterbacks. 
And pennant race highlights Yankee fans will update the game with the Jays coming up on the Toyota halftime. Third and eight for the Jets. Inunua in motion. Three man rush. It's time for Fitzpatrick and it's incomplete. It was Eric Walden back there off the deflection and the Jets will attempt a 35 or 36 yard field goal here. That's a great job by the Colt defense. Defensive coordinator Greg Minuski uses a two deep five under zone with all the limitations they have at cornerback. It's impressive that they can get off the field and adjust their scheme with all the new faces in their secondary Mike. 35 here John for Nick Folk. Ryan quickly holds. And the Jets take a 10-0 lead. Indy gets the ball to start the second half. We'll see if they can add something before halftime. The Jets fans, if we told you that through six quarters almost, your team would be 41 to 10 against the opponents. Feel pretty good about it. 31-10 win over Cleveland. Up 10 nothing here. Folk the kick. This will be returned by Tyler Varga. And the rookie running back able to push the pile. He gets maximum out of his kick return. Saw that against Buffalo last week as well. Out to the 22. So the Yankees in trouble against the Blue Jays and David Price, the Jays' great pitcher acquired from the Tigers tonight. The Yanks are going to need to come back on Tuesday and Wednesday if they can't get it out tonight. The Yankees and Jays, 7 Eastern, next two nights ESPN. You can stream it on Watch ESPN. Andrew Lux got three timeouts in a minute 44. It's from the 22. And Lux throws underneath. There goes Andre Johnson. To the 34 yard line, gain of a dozen. Catch number two for the all-time Texans leading receiver. Maybe that'll jumpstart Andre Johnson. This is where I want to see Andrew Luck. Pick the tempo up, get up and get going. Jets rush four, and Luck throws to Johnson who can't hang on. Buster's screen, the nickel in coverage. Buster's screen is an unknown for some, but he has some really good years for the Cleveland Browns. He's comfortable in the slot. It's a beautiful play getting that left arm in there against Andre Johnson. It's a tremendous play. It's a free agent, highly sought after. Jets guaranteed him 13 million, signed him for four years. Some were surprised they paid him that much. But really good nickel, worth it. Second and ten. Here come the Jets. Whole bunch of pressure. Luck shot downfield towards Dorset, the rookie. Incomplete screen back there again Andrew Luck excuse me Mike he's got the answers he's seeing the blitz he's changing the protection he sees the swarm we talked about two linebackers and a free safety right up the middle he keeps everybody in he maxes the protection but nobody's winning down the field there's the rookie Dorset and Buster screen is up to the challenge now it is third and ten remember the Colts have not picked up a third down 0 for 5 tonight. Just a hard count. Jets stayed on side. Luck climbs the pocket looking to take off. Not going to get there. Fumble. The football picked up by Revis. And the Jets will have it. That is another turnover for Luck and the Colts. Nobody can separate against man coverage. It's a credit to the Jets. Free agent pickups in the secondary. Screen, Revis, Cromartie, Marcus Gilchrist. There's nowhere to go with the football. Last week, the Jets knocked out Josh McCown. This week, they stripped Andrew Luck, and they're in business. Guess who, Mike? David Harris. He's your guy. He does it all for the New York Jets. And it's an Indianapolis team that has turned it over too often in the early going here. It gives the Jets a great opportunity to attack one on before halftime. Again, the Colts very depleted in the secondary. 
Marshall and Decker, great chance to win on these routes. To the 44, it is Decker out of bounds to the 38. Gain of a half dozen. He's a couple shy of 100 before the break. And against these zone coverages that Indianapolis is forced to play with all the injuries, don't lose sight of a screen pass from Ryan Fitzpatrick. I don't know how Indianapolis can do anything else but play zone, Mike. You don't want to ask these new corners to line up against these talented veteran receivers of the Jets. Decker's caught eight balls, most for a Jet in the first half in nine years. Complete to Bilal Powell. That's a first down for the Jets at the 32-yard line. That's the third time they've run that play, Mike. They clear out on the outside and just throw a quick outside breaking route and Ryan Fitzpatrick has the Jets knocking on the door again. So John, I've got the Colts for five turnovers here in the first six quarters of the season. Only a couple of touchdowns coming late in the game in Buffalo. And Indianapolis not playing the football they need to to get wins here against these two AFC East teams. First and ten. Fitzpatrick middle of the field. It's not caught. As he Nunwa went down low to try to scoop it. It's a play Nunwa needs to make. Chan Gailey using four wide receivers in one back. Not a lot of teams use four wides like Gailey has in these first two weeks of the regular season. But if a Nunwa wants to be part of it, he's got to make that play. Eric Walden, Colts defensive linebacker being walked back towards the lobby. That's Walden or Dwayne Allen. I beg your pardon. It's Allen, 83. Tight end who's going back to the locker room to be checked by the athletic training staff. 50 seconds left. Second down, Fitzpatrick for Marshall. Incomplete. Dwight Lowry. It's Dwight Lowry, the ex-New York Jet. Read the quarterback, makes a great play on the ball to help out Sheldon Price, who needs it. We run into pylon cam with the ball and the bodies. Here's the look coming at you. <laughs> that That's about good. as up close as you can get. And some great looks in this first half. Now this Colts fan base, which is quieted, by the Jets' performance, trying to back up their team. A 30-10 run to keep it in field goal range. A gain of two for Powell. Going to set up a 48-yard field goal attempt. Indy sitting on three timeouts. The Jets, two. Nobody's using any. Almost like his own read. And Robert Mathis, flat down the line, unblocked. Got to credit Indianapolis's run defense. Ivory, Bilal, Powell have gone nowhere on the ground. Jets are going to run this down and take the timeout since the Colts are not. They can run it all the way down wherever Coach Todd Bowles wants. They should take the timeout with two or three seconds left. He'll take it here with four. All right. And we'll try this field goal to end the half. Jets looking to go up 13 nothing. Be right back. So Folk set to try this 48-yard field goal. Should be the final play of the half. And the Colts will let him think about it as Chuck Pagano will take a timeout. John, the Jets have had the ball for 20 minutes, essentially, of this half. It'll be the Colts having it for 10. Indianapolis, unless they score on a blocked field goal here, will be shut out in the first half of the second straight week. And that's not part of the blueprint for the team in blue to be successful in 2015. This is very uncommon, and they're in no rhythm whatsoever on offense. They've not been able to run it. They haven't been able to pass protect. And most surprisingly, these Colt receivers haven't been able to separate. And T.Y. Hilton has an injury. Andre Johnson is new, but they've got to get something going second half. Let's see what Folk does. Tanner Purdom snaps. Ryan quickly holds. Nick Folk kicks. Off the upright and no good. So we've had two off the upright missed field goals. One by Vinatieri from 29 yards. And here Folk 
from 48. Well, a chance to get a turnover, a great chance to get some extra points. Got conservative there at the end of the drive. And Chuck Pagano's team is down 10 instead of 13. Indy will get the ball to start the second half. We send you to Chris Berman and the Toyota halftime. Hello, Boom. It's one of the top passing offenses in the NFL. Top last year. But Andrew Luck has been hit a lot in the first six quarters. There's not been a lot of success. This tip led to an interception that put the Jets in position for a touchdown and then a late turnover scooped up by Jarrell Rivas. Frustration for Andrew Luck and the Colts. Back-to-back -back first pass shut out. That hasn't happened since 1997 to the Colts. That's pre-Luck, pre-Peyton Manning. That's Jim Harbaugh, go blue, and Paul Justin with the quarterbacks that John, 5 of 14, 52 yards, two turnovers. You look at the numbers and you put them on him, but it's everybody around Andrew Luck that is the reason this team is struggling as we get to the second half and we do our DraftKings third quarter reset. Certainly is. Penalties, they haven't been able to run it. We said it in the pregame. When you fall behind in a down a distance against Todd Bowles, he's going to come with some extraordinary blitzes. The interception was exotic. It's a cross dog blitz with a slot up top. They drop a defensive lineman. They play zone coverage behind it. Look at this. Two linebackers on a cross dog. They drop a defensive tackle. Buster screen is unaccounted for, and you're thrown into a zone coverage. Good luck. And then right before the half, we said they were going to bring the swarm. Here it is. Two linebackers, a free safety. They swarm the house. And Andrew Luck did a great job protecting himself. But don't forget. The Jets are a completely different team this year. They yeah. spent a lot of money on this secondary, and man, have they delivered. They're paying off, and Chuck Pagano's got some issues to deal with before this second half. Here's Lisa. Yeah, Mike, well, Chuck uh, Pagano absolutely agreed with what John said. He said penalties, turnovers, that those things were their undoing in the first half. He said that at least we were able to make some plays on defense on those sudden change situations. He felt that perhaps when the Jets missed that field goal at the end of the half, that maybe that will give them a little bit of momentum. A couple of injuries to tell you about. We saw that uh, corner Vontae Davis and tight end Dwayne Allen, they both went into the locker room towards the end of the first half. They are both still back in the locker room. They are not on the field. As soon as the Colts give us uh, an update on their status, we'll let you know, Mike. Okay, Lisa, thank you. And Vontae Davis is very important. As we detailed a few times in the first half, Indianapolis decimated in the secondary. With Davis out, they're without their top three choices at corner. Nick Folk will kick it off to start this third quarter. Griff Whalen will bring it up. Nope, he'll muff the catch. He'll take a knee, so the Colts will start at the 20 yard line. So we'll look at some numbers here, John. Third down conversions, the Colts were average last year. Red zone, a little bit above average, but in the middle of the pack, to be an elite offense, you gotta be top 10 in these categories. And Andrew Luck told me Saturday, these were his points of focus. We need to be better in these situations. They weren't in the first half. 0 for 6 on third down, one dry trip to the red zone. It's not all him, but it's their offense but he's the one who's going to try to turn that around in the second half. Begins from the 20. It's a loss of three-yard Buster screen. Having an outstanding game. Comes off the corner to get Frank Gore. Buster screen. First play of the second half, they blitz, Mike. Right off the slot, Buster screen. Waiting on Frank Gore. Not only that, he'll tackle you. He goes in there viciously. I love the way screen plays. Versatile, every down defender, and he looks up to Cromartie and Revis. Those are his two idols. Lance Lewis came out left guard with a bit of an issue. Hugh Thornton is now checked in at left guard for Indianapolis, number 69. Luck's got some time here. Gore working around Harris. Gets to the 22-yard line. It'll be a gain of just four, and Lewis, the starting left guard, comes back in. Here are the possessions. Three straight three and outs. The fumble on that last one. Other than that seven-play, 65-yard drive, it's been very poor. I'm not sure what the Colts are doing. You see Josh Robinson check in as the third down back. Frank Gore's on the sideline. Robinson missed the pickup in the first half. Let's see if the Jets blitz this runner again. This is third and eight, and the pressure comes, and Luck in trouble, hangs in there. 
throws, the flag is down, and it is ruled on the sideline, a catch at the 37-yard line. Dante Moncrief was over there, and now the flag thrown at the 32. For the pass, holding defense number 31. That penalty is declined, result of the play, first down. Well, they gain a 15 yards with Moncrief. Second year man out of Ole Miss. Much needed play by Moncrief. Good concentration on the sideline. Clean catch. It's frustrating though for T.Y. Hilton. Look at these receivers when they break the huddle and you see Darrell Rivas and Cromarty down Set after up. down. Relentless bump and run coverage defenders can really frustrate you. Here's luck from the 37. Walking right in was Leonard Williams. He got away, threw it away. Out of the tackle box would save him from intentional grounding. Jets are trying to say flag should be thrown. Well, here's the sixth off. pick, Mike. Sixth pick in the draft out of USC. Leonard Williams. Clearly a bust by Lewis at left guard. And how good will the Jets be if Sheldon Richardson returns? This team is loaded with big people and skilled defenders. They could be the best defense in all of football this year, Mike. High, high praise. Wilkerson, Harrison, and Williams up front. They play without Richardson, as you mentioned. Second and ten. Lux pass, a short one. T.Y. Hilton, the catch brought down by Revis, who's trailing him all the way at the 40-yard line. Just the first catch for T.Y. Hilton. He told us, I'm going to go with T.Y. Hilton. And whether he's been in the slot or out wide, Revis has been in his shadow all night long. Very underrated tackler, Darrell Revis. And at this point in his career, he's given a lot of leadership to these Jets. He didn't come back here to do anything but win. You heard a jet yell out, watch the hard count. Third and seven, luck throwing right side. And it's caught by Moncrief, but working on screen. And he's got the first down to the 35-yard line. What you have to do against these pressure defenses. It's man coverage, beautiful back shoulder throw by Andrew Luck. And Moncrief goes up and gets it. 24-yard gain, Jets are subbing. Luck prevented from snapping as Indianapolis made a personnel change. Jets get a chance to match. On a roll, on a roll. The 70. Tyler Park is the back. Luck hit by Williams as he throws. It's high and incomplete. John, you mentioned Sheldon Richardson before. He is not with the Jets, as most people know. The 24-year-old star defensive tackle, defensive rookie of the year in 2013. Pro Bowler last year was suspended for four games for the NFL substance abuse policy. And then, remember, he was in that traffic stop where he was going over 140 miles per hour and traffic violations resisting arrest charges. So that's pending with a hearing in October. The four-game suspension starts with the league. Who knows if anything will be added onto that. But that's a piece to this defensive line. If he does ever come back for the Jets, that make him even better. Hilton on the edge. T.Y. Hilton. Tried to stay in bounds, got blocking from his fellow receivers, and got close to the first down, two yards shy of it. It's a good read by Andrew Luck. It's another blitz by screen off the slot. Luck picks the ball up, throws it outside. That's a built-in quick screen on some of these inside runs, and Andrew Luck saw that all the way. Third and two. They'll run inside run, and Gore gets the first down inside the 25-yard line. Best-looking post drive of the night. Frank Gore will add life to your football team. You want to get tougher? You want to get better running the ball, picking up blitzes? Get Frank Gore. That's why he's brought here. I'd be surprised if they take him out of the football game unless he needs a breather. Let's go load, 56. First down from the 24. There's a hole there. Jet brought down. The flag's down as Luck runs and slides at the 15. 
Easy call will bring this back, holding on Indianapolis. I think they got Todd Harriman's against Muhammad Wilkerson, Mike. Holding. Offense number 79. 10-yard penalty. First down. Well, the ex-Philadelphia Eagle. Clearly holding Muhammad Wilkerson, and the offensive line of the Colts continues to be erratic. They've had numerous changes at every position but left tackle, and that's a back-breaking penalty. Set up first and 20. One out. Red flex. Second out. Three down. Red flex. Jack Doyle is 84, the tight end. He's playing because Dwayne Allen, as Lisa told you, is out being evaluated for injury. Pocket collapsing, nobody open downfield. Luck escaping, chased by Calvin Pace. Goes at sideline for Moncrief, and it's incomplete. That's one thing that Andrew Luck has done a great job of as an NFL quarterback, making plays, scrambling. He's run for a lot of yards. He scored 12 touchdowns, but he's also been able to create some big plays on the scramble drill. That time, no one uncovered. You see Luck's career rushing total. He saw back his Stanford days run people over downfield. He threw a pick last week in Buffalo. He was the one down there, wanted to make the tackle first. Terrific prototype for the position. 6'4", 240. Second and 20. Here is Moncrief working on Revis inside the 20. He'll set up a third and five. Surprise that time. Revis played off of, Cremo of uh, Moncrief, and they throw the ball right in front of him. A little hitch route. And it sets up a third down and five for the Colts. Let's see if Todd Bowles brings another blitz. Watch luck on the hand signals down here, Mike. He's got that two receiver slot formation he loves. 56. Luck trying to get it himself. Reaching forward out of the Trevor Riley tackle. The spot gives him a first down. What an individual play by Andrew Luck. The strength he has at the quarterback position is rare. Again, nobody open. He keeps two hands on the ball. He pushes forward, and he fights for the Indianapolis Colts. Great effort by Andrew Luck. We showed you at the start of the half the struggles on third down. 0 of 6 in the first half. They've converted four third downs on this drop. In the red zone, here is Gore. Frank Gore. 4-3 to the 11-yard line. Here comes Joe Wright's number 76. As an extra offensive lineman, they used this in the first half and threw the ball to Wright. I don't expect he'll throw it to a tackle twice in the red zone, Mike, but keep an eye on 76, right side of your screen. That's a very heavy formation. He did report as eligible, and you see both the umpire and the referee making that very clear to the Jets. What's seventy? What's up? From the 11-yard line, four. Trying to be patient, but nothing develops. That front of the Jets that you pointed out early on, John, they don't give you any space to run. And now Pep Hamilton, offensive coordinator for the Colts, has got to figure out a third down here in the red zone. And that's quite a matchup. Todd Bowles. Casey Rogers is defensive coordinator working against Pep Hamilton. Pep Hamilton's gone to a rookie running back right now in a critical third down, Tyler Varga. Let's see if he knows anything about these protections because he's probably going to get blitzed. Andre Johnson in the slot. Luck throwing. T.Y. Hilton first down at the four-yard line. Tight window, pinpoint passing. Big first down and out of motion. That's one way to get Darrell Revis off of you. They switch the coverage and he beats Buster Screen inside. Well done. What a drive this is for Indianapolis. 
Josh Robinson, another rookie at the goal line. Usually this is Frank Gore time. Play 16 of the drive. Taking up half the quarter. And the rookie cannot get through. Ball comes out. It's like Calvin Pryor has it there on the ground. Was it ruled a fumble? You see, down by Second contact. Down. down by contact. Driving forward, driving forward. You see the knees were down. It's hard to tell where the knees come down. This will give you a better look. Here's the knee. The ball's still in there and secure. Red flag. For challenge has been thrown by Todd Bowles. New York is challenging the ruling on the field. Timeout. So is there anything clear, clear that shows it's out before that knee is down? Tight one here. So big ruling here was the runner, the rookie down by contact, John Hussey, referee, second NFL game. Remember, he was a line judge in the league for 13 years. The ruling on the field stands as called. New York will be charged the timeout. It is second down. So it stands. It was not confirmed. There was nothing definitive in here in the pile. You see the knee come down for 34 right. Still going, still going. Right there, he's down. And then you look for the ball inside. And do you see the ball coming out? You can piece a couple of replays together. But Hussey, the referee here in consultation, with the game day central, Dean Blandino, the vice president of officiating, now River on in New York. Those guys looking along with the referee make that decision. So, John, it's second and goal. Well, David Perry, the nose tackle, is checked in at fullback, and so is Frank Gore. I hope they give him the ball off the left side. There's the starting defensive lineman in motion to lead the way. Gore up the middle. And he is stopped short of the goal line. Third and goal. There's a lot of big bodies out there now. You got your starting nose tackle in there as a fullback. You got a lot of big New York Jets. And on a reverse handoff, penetration stuffs Frank Gore. They're down inside the one. Andrew Luck on a quarterback sneak. You Don't saw, be surprised. Yeah, you saw there, John. He got his right foot tripping over Lance Lewis, his guard. Very close to knocking it in. Play 18. For a fumble the football. It's loose. Still loose. And the Jets have it. Unbelievable. Almost a 10-minute drive. They miss an exchange, and the Jets are off the field. Third turnover by the Colts. We have flags down at the back end of the play. Jarrell Revis comes up with his second fumble recovery of the game, third on the season. This all seems to be The rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. After the play on sportsmanlike conduct, number 56, pulling a player off of the pile. Half the distance to the goal, New York's ball, first down. 56 on the Jets. It's only going to move him from the one to the half yard line there, essentially. But Indianapolis kept it for nearly 10 minutes. One of the money guys in the league, Frank Gore, fumbles at the goal line. The Colts turn it over. Okay, that play was a turnover, so it's automatically reviewed. There is something to review here, because in the scramble, where do the Jets clearly get possession? They bring in two-time Super Bowl referee Jerry Austin with us here in the booth. Jerry, we're looking for where Revis recovers the ball after the Gore fumble. The recovery must occur in the field of play for the ball to be placed in the field of play and that means the entire ball out he has possession After of the review, ball on the line the ruling of a fumble is confirmed the defensive player recovered the football in the end zone was touched down by contact 
Therefore, we will reward a touchback to New York. After the play, we have unsportsmanlike conduct. We will enforce that penalty from the 20-yard line. It will be first down from the 10. So as we were saying, Jerry, whole ball would have to be out for the Jets to be backed up to the one. That is correct. Therefore, and since there was a penalty on the play and it's a touchback, you go to the 20 and then do enforce the penalty. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good. John, for Chuck Pagano and this Colts offense, this not just night, but season of frustration continues and encapsulated there with that long drive. Nothing to show for. Look at this. Seven quarters now, 16 drives. They have 14 points, five turnovers, and two missed field goals. Unbelievable, and it's been in every situation. Third down, two minute, even on the goal line. Not good enough. Vontae Davis, their best corner, out for the game with a concussion. So they are down the rest of the night to cornerbacks 4, 5, and 6. Brandon Marshall with the catch 4, 5 to the 15. First time we're seeing the Jets offensively here in this second half. Get you caught up on the leaders in this game offensively and their stats. And don't forget, Mike, the Colts are playing with a lot of new faces at corner. Top of the screen, Sheldon Price. Number 25, Jalil Brown pressed into service. That's why you're seeing these safeties play so deep to help these corners. Second and five for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ivory running to the right. And got to think the Colts defense has done a good job here tonight for their front seven. Jarrell Freeman on that tackle sets up third down. They've done a great job. It's hard to stop the run when you remove the safeties from the box. Once again, it forces a critical third down and four. Let's see if Greg Minuski continues to back off and play zone coverage with his depleted secondary. Robert Mathis did not play all of last year, didn't play week one, first game back in. King of the strip, sack, fumble, and recovery over the years on that Colts defensive end. Third and four. Third and Pass to the right side by Fitzpatrick incomplete with Marshall doing a great job covering him was Eric Patterson with John said was just signed from the practice squad on Friday. This is a great job by these young Colt defenders. Patterson with help over the top from Dwight Lowry. It's a great job by Greg Minuski playing a coverage they're not known for here in Indianapolis. This has been a man-to-man -man press cover team and they've done a nice job stopping a run by removing their safeties. Three and out. Pressure up the middle at Quigley. Forces a bad kick. Whalen will just escort it to the sideline. It's only going to be a 36-yard kick. Josh McNary just activated to the roster for Indianapolis this week. Brought the heat on the punter. One of the beautiful spots here, the Soldiers and Sailors Monument, protecting those who are honoring those who protected us. Protecting Andrew Luck has been an issue, a changing cast. Since he's been here, John, Costanzo's been the standard. One left tackle. Look at all those guys. Eight different, now nine with Lance Lewis left guards. The centers, Holmes is the fifth different center Luck has had. The right guards, now six as they signed Harriman's. Same deal as the turnstile of the right tackle spot. Now six with Muhort, who played along the offensive line before as well as Gore carries it to midfield. So, John, it's only been 50 starts now for Andrew Luck, three-plus seasons. That's a very inconsistent group up front trying to protect him. Very inconsistent, and that's almost scary. I mean, that's a lot of different combinations. And then you have Andre Johnson, Frank Gore just got here. It happens at the skill positions also. It's a big reason, I think, why the Colts are struggling early this season. And the Jets defense has a lot to do with it. And the Buffalo defense they played last week. They're Indeed. getting two elite front sevens out of the gate here. Second and eight for Luck. Throwing in the middle of a lot of tight coverage. T.Y. Hilton passing complete. Blanketed by Screen. We've called Buster Screen's name every drive. He called Buster Screen's name a lot because he's a good player. He's covering T.Y. Hilton. And there's Marcus Gilchrist, 21, over the top prior. Nine first-round draft choices, part of this New York Jet defense, and they play like it. Third and eight. Tyler Varga is the back. And 
And Luck firing right side, and Rebus has another turnover. Lost his shoe, but got the ball. Wilkerson hits Andrew Luck, forces another errant throw, and Darrell Rebus continues to be one of the very best. Colts booing their offense. Rebus has three turnovers tonight. Two fumble recoveries and that pick. Our coverage tonight from Spider Cam brought to you by DirecTV. You see those unhappy and quiet fans. The Colts have turned it over their last three possessions. Jets defense, a bonanza of turnovers in the first two games. Good hard run by Ivory. Gain of about six. Let's go back to the last turnover. Oh, it's blitzing. It's pressure. You see Demario Davis, number 56, on a blitz. Muhammad Wilkerson at the top of the screen, supplying pressure, and there's just no chance. And when you throw the ball against Darrell Revis under fire, bad things are going to happen. <laughs> Philip Dorsett, no match for the great Darrell Revis. As we said, yeah. Revis has three hey, takeaways tonight. The Jets have nine here in the first two games. That run by Ivory, officially seven, his best of the night. And this one's better. Ivory oh. hurtling, would-be tacklers down to the 43. And a flag at the back end of a 19-yard game. Chris Ivory shows some stuff right here. Well-blocked play, and he hurdles a Indianapolis Colt. If this is a face mask, it becomes a 34-yard game. Tacking on 15. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 68. That penalty is 15 yards. The result of the play was a first down. First down. Breno Giacomini coming down field for the Jets. Will instead take it back, and that's still the game for the Jets. They'll give him the first down. Take a look at the personal foul, Mike. 68 at the back end and just caught on the front end of the replay as Mike Adams made the tackle his hand was up there by the face mask when I saw the flag I thought that's what it was and the Colts might be fortunate that they didn't catch that and caught Giacomini with that push on Bjorn Werner from the 42 Adams with the safety blitz comes up and makes the play for the stop is that Lowry? Lowry beg your pardon Dwight Lowry comes up with the safety blitz Dwight Lowry Trying to make something happen for this Colt defense. They need a turnover in the worst way. And you see offensive coordinator Chan Gailey being very persistent, conservative, Mike, even though the Colts are playing with a decimated secondary. Are you surprised at that? I am a bit surprised, but they have so much confidence in their defense, they do not want to risk a turnover with a 10-point lead. Second and nine, Fitzpatrick on the boot towards Brandon Marshall. They get up to the 41. There is that first down for the Jets again of 16 to Marshall. It's the bootleg. Fitzpatrick rolling to his right. It's a comeback route. Marshall against Jalil Brown. Almost feel like they could complete that pass whenever they want. Colts are on the ropes right now. Look for some kind of blitz from Greg Minuski. From the 41, Ivory. The job diving down by Dequell Jackson to make the tackle as this quarter will wind down. Now, 45 years after they played in the first Monday night game on the road, Jets lost that one. Got a chance to win this one. Up 10-0. After Jets are up by 10 starting the fourth. They've won their last 82 when they've had at least an eight or more lead in the fourth quarter. Any familiarity with the last time they lost the 99 game against uh, the Raiders? Yes, I remember that game in 1999. Who's the coach of the Raiders at that point? Oh, that would be me, Mike. Okay. <laughs> what a comeback. Get that film. It's been a long time, 15 years since the Jets have blown a fourth quarter lead of eight or more. So reason to feel confident. They continue to stay conservative and milk that clock. As they run up the middle with Ivory there, set up third down. Once again, here comes Patterson, 41. 
Gathers, 42, another rookie. Robert Mathis has to be checking in this Colt Hunt huddle wondering, who are you guys? Law Powell starts out at the top. The running back spread wide. And on third and seven, here is Fitzpatrick going for Decker again. Incomplete. Good challenge by Jalil Brown to knock it out and set up fourth down. Great play by Jalil Brown. Got Eric Decker running to the corner. Fitzpatrick throws the ball early. Decker goes up, gets two hands on it. Nice job raking the ball out of Decker's chest by Jalil Brown. Field goal from here would be 56 yards. That's equal to the career long of Nick Folk, but he made that at altitude at Denver. So, up 10 in this very conservative, defensive-minded mode. The choice by Bowles is back him up. Griff Whalen, fair catch at the 8. 30 yards, all net. Andrew Luck, below 50% completion percentage, three turnovers. Can he turn it around here in the fourth? Jets defense pitching a shutout. Darrell Rivas is back. He's helping the cause here. Three turnovers that he's been responsible for tonight. Makes you wonder why they let him go in the first place. <laughs> what an impact he's had, Mike. As a cover guy, as a tackler, as an opportunistic turnover machine. And good luck to the Colts take over from the nine. Here is Gore running right and gaining seven to the 17. Darrell Rivas. Andrew Luck is scrambling. David Harris forces a fumble. Guess who's there? Then on the goal line. Watch this tackle with pay dirt. And he finds the ball and recovers it. And he intercepted Luck just recently. Three turnovers. That's nine in seven quarters for this Jet defense. Officially, the Gore gain was eight. It's second and two. Luck will run for it. Get it. Get out of bounds at the 38. We got a flag downfield. They got Jack Doyle, number 84. And it's coming back. Holding. Offense number 84. 10 yard penalty. Second down. It would have been a 21 yard gain. Dwayne Allen, the other tight end, along with Kobe Fleener, that ankle injury ruled out for the game. We saw him leave right before the half. See Doyle and Gilchrist. I don't see much there, but. Second and two. Chuck Pagano was talking to John Hussey, the referee. And another member of this crew, two play stoppages ago. I'm not sure what the conversation was about, but Colts have been penalized eight times here tonight. Oh. Josh Robinson at the back, and Luck forced to take a timeout. Totally out of sync. Let's hope Andrew Luck gets something from Pep Hamilton when we return. Another loss here with the Colts will just add to the disharmonious start to this season. Ryan Grigson, general manager on the left, Chuck Pagano, the head coach on the right, the pregame shows the national conversation talking about a potential rift within the organization both guys say you know you go back and forth day to day with personnel issues and you don't connect all the time coach and GM Pagano turned down a contract extension this is the last year of his deal and certainly the success of the team will impact how much conversation there is about the future of the general manager and the head coach here in Indianapolis there Josh Robinson stopped on second down it will be third down and John's so rare to come here and hear booze and see the offense struggle so much yeah it is and you know when you talk about the general manager and the head coach that's the situation around the league Mike there has to be a collaboration between the two the problem is is when you're on the clock who gets to call the shots and I think there might be some disagreements on how this roster was put together but the bottom line is the Colts need a first down in the worst way. This is third and two. Jets rush four here. 
Luck steps up. He ran for the first down once. Going to run for it again and get it before being hit by David Harris. First down, Indianapolis. Andrew Luck converting a lot of these third downs with his legs. Coverage down the field has been outstanding. Man coverage and zone coverage, and Luck has been forced to put it down and run repeatedly here in the second half. Colts fans looking for a late hit on Harris. Up by the head. Here's Luck, the first down throw complete to Hilton. T.Y. Hilton in front of Jarrell Rivas made a miss in the open field. And is down at the 48-yard line. And Hilton might be hurt, Mike, at the end of that run. He came in with a bad knee. It's a beautiful pattern by T.Y. Hilton. Let's hope he's okay. But he stopped on a dime, and Andrew Luck threw the ball early with great anticipation. Injured that knee in the third quarter in Buffalo last week. Watch him slam on the brakes. First turn, ball's thrown, and at the end of the run, let's keep an eye on T.Y. Hilton. Great stiff arm against Revis. Hilton just signed a huge contract after a breakout season a year ago, and they certainly need him to return to this game at crunch time. From the 49 on first down, here's Luck. Taking a shot downfield towards Philip Dorsett, the rookie. <laughs> Incomplete with Revis there again. It's that slot combination that the Colts love to run. They clear it out with speed. Philip Dorsett, they have Andre Johnson running a corner route underneath them, and Andrew Luck, give him credit. He continues to test Darrell Revis, who almost had his fourth turnover. Second and ten, Hilton still on the sideline, testing that left knee. Colts in five in the pattern. Luck throwing complete. A lot of space now for the rookie, Philip Dorsett. He can run. To the 26-yard line, gain of 25. Indy on the move. Jets look tired, not quite sure what that coverage was, but the protection held up, and Andrew Luck had time to get back to Dorsett who just ran a simple hitch route. Of course, it averaged 22 yards a catch at Miami, Florida. Make no mistake about it, this man can run. First catch of the night, had two last week. T.Y. Hilton back in for Indy. Still plenty of time here for the Colts, and the Jets are going to have to come up with a good play again on defense. Luck over the middle. On the run, it is Moncrief. Touchdown, Colts. Andrew Luck, give these Colts credit for hanging in there. It's been an ugly three and a half quarters of football. But once again, it's those two receiver slot formation that Andrew Luck sees and reads extremely well. They get Moncrief on a two-way go, and he stole the show there. Watch him against Cromartie. Start inside, jerk back to the outside, and in separate back indoors for a touchdown a beautiful route by Moncrief maybe that timeout gave Luck and Pep Hamilton time to get the right plays in order nice drive by the Colts Vinatieri adds the extra point Dante Moncrief caught a touchdown from Andrew Luck last week we have a flag down on the play at the back end as we watch Moncrief's second touchdown of the season. Second year man from Ole Miss. Extra point makes it 10-7. And we'll sort the flag. The try is good. After the play was over, personal foul, defense number 98. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff, 15 yards. Timeout. 10-7. Colts on the board for the first time and very much in this one. survived and lived to tell. You've had that before, huh? I sure have. It's pretty good. The strong stuff. It's, 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 it'll test you. Only at St. Elmo's. Now, the Colts are kicking off from midfield. 
Remember last year, the Colts pulled three surprise onside kicks. That has drawn a lot of attention, so everybody seems to be aware of it. The Jets are certainly prepared for it with their hands team out right now. They're always susceptible to that little half kick that falls into that voided area beyond the 30 where there's no one. McAfee says we'll save that for another time. Just blast it through the end zone. All right, John, let's go back to the Colts' first touchdown of the night. Well, Andrew Luck loves these two receiver slot combination. They use Frank Gore to clear it out, and they get Dante Moncrief on a two-way go against Antonio Cromartie. He can go outside or inside. Did a beautiful job with that hesitation move. And after the catch, he does the rest. But Andrew Luck, seeing clearly, knowing exactly what he has on the backside, and he throws a strike. Jets got to get something going on offense. They've been very conservative with a 10-point lead. It's down to three. The pressure's on Ryan Fitzpatrick. From the 20, they will go to the air. Slant Brandon Marshall made two Colts run into each other in a gain of 11. Once again, Colts without their top three defensive back cornerbacks in this game. That's a great job by Fitzpatrick. He has the eight-man front. He sees the loaded box. He went kill, kill, kill. He sees Mike Adams down there. He's going to say kill, kill, kill. Let's change this play. Throw a slant to Brandon Marshall against one-on-one -on -one coverage. Chan Gailey giving Ryan Fitzpatrick the freedom to change plays down the stretch for the Jets. See 42 down there for the Colts. He is a safety. Clayton gathers, but he's playing essentially the linebacker when they go to five DBs. I agree with the catch. Just a gain of a yard or two. So in the personnel battle, now you see the Colts are being dictated by the Jets, the people they have on the field because of the spread formations. That's back-to-back -back blitzes by this Colt defense. Look out there, Mike. You see Trent Cole, the ex-Philadelphia Eagle, number two sack man in Eagle history, made the move to Indianapolis. What a great time for him to make his presence felt in the home opener here. Second and eight, Fitzpatrick back to the air. Middle on the run. It's caught by Inunua. Quincy Inunua, first down for the Jets. Inunua known as a blocking wide receiver at Nebraska, has found a niche in his Chan Gailey offense. Down the seam he goes against Jalil Brown on a deep cross. Ball thrown perfectly by Fitzpatrick. Jets are very high on this young man. Anybody you talk to around this team, this kid could be something unique for them. Good skill set. 27 on the game by Inunua. Diving under eight minutes now. Back to the air to Brandon Marshall. <laughs> Incomplete with a flag. Sheldon Price, again, this is the first time in his NFL career that he's played defense. Only special teams is locked in here with Brandon Marshall. Before the pass, holding defense number 40. Five-yard penalty, automatic, first down. It's at Brandon Marsh in isolation we've talked about all weekend, Mike. You see Fitzpatrick, he sees one-on-one -on -one coverage, a subtle hand signal to Brandon Marshall. He says, let's go. And they have him one-on-one -on -one in press coverage against Sheldon Price. Credit Fitzpatrick and offensive coordinator Chan Gailey for this adjustment. Fourth first down picked up via penalty tonight by the Jets. 34. Fitzpatrick's got two going deep into double coverage. Incomplete to Chris Owusu. As Mike Adams, the safety, and Jalil Brown ran with him. You know, Mike, the Jets drafted Devin Smith out of Ohio State at the top of the second round. And Devin Smith can fly. He's been hurt. He hasn't been able to play yet. So they lack deep speed. Owusu gives them a little bit of heat down the field. Anunwa has the ability to run, but... They miss the deep element of speed that Devin Smith will give him when he returns. Broke his ribs in the preseason. Jets hope to get him back the next couple of weeks. We see those deep shots have been not good for Fitzpatrick. To the ground, Ivory, big opening. 
Lowers the shoulder at the 20. Takes Dwight Lowry to the 18. First down, Jets. Misdirection, counterplay. Right guard, tight end. Watch Cologne. Watch 47, Kellen Davis on this counterplay. Pull, kick out, lead through. And Chris Ivory doesn't shy away from any contact. Impressive answer by the Jet offense. Why? They got aggressive. They started throwing the ball. They, even in the end of the first half, when they got the turnover, they were very conservative. Could have made it a bigger cushion. Bilal Powell now is the running back. And he'll gain three to the 15-yard line. And it'll be under seven minutes remaining. This is Chan Gailey, the offensive coordinator, Mike. He's been a head coach of the Cowboys, the Bills. Georgia Tech and he calls a game almost like he is a head coach he understands it's not about yardage titles it's not about how many plays we can run in a game it's about winning the football game playing to our strengths and right now it's our defense and it's Brandon Marshall against either one of these young corners a great point you just made there John it's not about stats or ego it's just about get the win as he calls plays the 15 Going to Marshall, back shoulder, and a flag down as Marshall powers over the goal line and is in for the touchdown. Indianapolis asked for that one. Press coverage. Brandon Marshall brought to New York for this for reason. Pass, holding defense number 25. That penalty is declined. Touchdown. The response by the Jets puts New York back on top by 10. Hey, you isolate a great receiver. He's going to beat your fourth corner when the game is on the line and Brandon Marshall who made a couple huge plays last week how about the strip that he had getting the ball back against Cleveland here he is in the fourth quarter what a pickup he has been for the Jets Marshall right inside the pylon for the six this is over the top looking up the pylon towards the sky and you see he's inside the pylon there it's a unique great look there it gives you an idea that he was in Goes over 100 yards receiving on the night. And the touchdown. Extra point added by Nick Folk. Respond. How do you respond? Jets give up their first score. Or into a much of offense. Seven plays, 80 yards. The final 15 by number 15. The Marshall score puts New York back up by 10. A lot of NFL dreams start in this stadium. It's the home of the scouting combine every February. Of course, the uh, dreams ended in here in the Super Bowl. It was held Super Bowl 46 in here. They've held Final Fours in here in basketball. The women's Final Four you'll see on ESPN will be held here this spring. Great facility, Lucas Oil Stadium, downtown Indianapolis, home of the Colts. And the Colts in desperate need of a comeback. Down 10 as the Jets respond with a terrific touchdown drive. Here's Tyler Varga. Bounces off the initial hit, flag down as Varga's down back at the 16 yard line. Block in the back, receiving team number 51. 10 yard penalty. First down. John, going back to Monday Night Countdown, you put on the professor hat, taught us some football told us to watch the subtleties of the hand signal. Well, I'll tell you little Fitzpatrick. He says, hey, if it's bump and run, I'm going to give you a hand signal there, and you take the game over. And that's just what he did. Nonverbal communication between Marshall and Fitzpatrick, the story of that drive. Funny, Marshall says, they took my freedom away. He's been used to making his own hand signals, and Chan Gailey says, no, no, Brandon. Fitzpatrick will make the signals. You just run the route. And so far, Fitzpatrick and Marshall have been very effective as Jets. Eric Decker, not on the field at the end of that drive, went to the locker room to be looked at. So the Jets, number two wide receiver, out of the equation for the moment. Here's Moncrief, caught a touchdown earlier as the Colts are in desperate need of making quick plays and stopping the clock. Now obviously, 10. excuse me, Mike, obviously Andrew Luck is going to pick up the tempo. Some kind of score paramount here to make this a one possession game let's see if the Jets can rev up their rush from the 15 goes to Josh Robinson 
Here's the out of Mississippi State as the first down of the 18-yard line. You know this jet pass rush missing Sheldon Richardson. They lost a good pass rusher last week. Their draft choice from Louisville, the so they're yes, they're light on pass rushers, and I have to think Wilkerson, Pace, Williams have to be getting tired. 525 left. Look, surveying and thrown down with a flag coming down, as well as Quentin Copels comes up with the sack. Quentin Copels. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense, a hit to the bled neck area, 15 yards, automatic first down. And we'll take it up to the 33 yard line. Well, that's a huge penalty. Copels beat Lake Costanzo. He got oh. him around the neck. In his head and neck area, you see him hit the oh, side sorry. of the face mask. He doesn't go to grasp it, and he pulls him down by the jersey. I don't see that. Mike. Big penalty. Keeps the drive alive. I think both teams will send a few of the flags and penalties that were called to the league office. To get further clarification, this is a pass complete to Andre Johnson to the 44-yard line. And a first down in under five minutes left. Got to get Andre Johnson to become a bigger part of this Colt offense. Awfully quiet throughout the first two regular season games. Colts operating without Dwayne Allen, their tight end, out for the game with an ankle injury. Luck hit as he uh -oh. throws, and it's intercepted on the sideline. Both feet down for Gilchrist, and Marcus has come up with his sixth career interception. And the Colts have turned it over five times, and the Jets' best first two games in franchise history in terms of turnovers, ten in the first two games. Well, Arizona had Tyron Matthew as a coverage safety, and Todd Bowles loved it. Now he has Marcus Gilchrist, and man, have these new Jets delivered in the secondary. Andrew Luck has kept so many plays alive, and he is not getting any support up front. The numbers are really poor. Three interceptions tonight, two against Buffalo. Well, take a look at Muhammad Wilkerson, 96 on a simple TT son. He blows Andrew Luck up. And Andre Johnson unable to separate. T.Y. Hilton covered by Revis. No time to throw and nowhere to go with the ball. Jets try to run this out. Bilal Powell right side to the 41-yard line. Luck has been responsible for 28 turnovers as the Colts take a timeout here. 28 turnovers last year in the first two games of this year. 21 picks thrown, seven fumbles. That's the most in the NFL you include last year in this. And, John, you've watched a lot of the tape. That's not just Andrew. Andrew's keeping some plays alive here that other guys wouldn't. But they need to take better care of the ball if they're going to have any hopes here of digging out of an 0-2 hole again. It's been an ugly night of offensive football. They have not been able to get their running game going. Frank Gore fumbles at the one-yard line. Their pass protection has not been good. And their receivers haven't separated. And you have to go back to the Jets, Mike. They are the big part of this problem. They have dominated on the defensive side. Second and seven. Ball's out. Bilal Powell, who has rarely dropped the ball, fumbles here, and let's see who has it. Bilal Powell has never lost a fumble in his career. No matter who recovers, we're going to have a look to see if the knee was down before the ball comes out. Oh, wow. You can hear them, you know, white ball, blue ball. Jet ball. It belongs to the Jets. The Colts are going to come off the ball, it sounds like, uh, off the pile with the ball in their hands, and they are none too pleased about losing possession. And the clock winds. Powell... Hasn't lost a fumble. He had 415 touches coming into tonight. So add 10 more. 425 touches. Twice he fumbled and the Jets recovered. Now make it three times with that play. 
I get Todd Bowles a lot of credit. The Jets have been so far behind in the turnover ratio for the last few years. And that stat alone has them 2-0. and Here comes a blitz. Interesting third and six. Colts down to one timeout. And the Jets are going to throw it here. It's complete for the first down to Powell into Colts territory at the 49. That was a gutsy call by Chan Gailey with a 10-point lead in a no-back set. You don't think he trusts Fitzpatrick? I don't yeah. think surprising. I've seen that call in a while. But Todd Bowles 2-0 as the head coach of the Jets, and I just couldn't get over that turnover statistic, how inept the Jets have been creating turnovers and how good they've been throughout the first two games. 28 the last two seasons. Lowest two hey, season Adam, total in like league history. Two. And 10 in two Wait. games. Powell running left. Powell breaks out of two tackles. Stays in bounds at the 27 yard line. First down. John, the defending Super Bowl three champion Jets in the 1969 season. <laughs> They forced nine turnovers the first two games. That was the franchise's best two-game turnover start on defense until the 10 here. Cleveland and now tonight. You know, the Jets seem to have the Colts number a few years ago. They ended their 14-0 season here, Mike. That's right. With a big victory. And Brandon Marshall seems to like playing here. Another touchdown tonight. Last time Marshall was here, I think he broke an NFL record with 21 catches. That's right. He did. You are. I'm on my stuff, man. I know this Jets stuff, Colts. man. <laughs> Boy. 26 run up the middle for four to the 22 one dim note for the Jets as we have a two-minute warning we get word that Eric Decker back in the locker room being evaluated for a knee injury otherwise a bright night for New York Two-minute warning here in Indy. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Levy, and in this role, I will always be filling in for Stuart Scott. The GMC postgame report is coming up next. Ray Lewis, Steve Young, Trent Dilfer will join me. We'll break it all down, complete analysis, highlights, and reaction, and we'll talk to the new head coach for Team USA in the upcoming World Cup of Hockey. That's all coming up on SportsCenter with Scott Van Pelt immediately following the game. Upstairs to Mike and John. All right, Leaves, thank you. Well said, pal. Indianapolis likely looking at 0-2. They opened 0-2 last year with losses to Denver and Philadelphia on a Monday night, but then came back, got into the AFC South where they haven't lost in the last two years and got on a roll. But note this, no teams made the playoffs back-to-back -back years after starting 0-2. Colts did it last year. They'll try to turn that around as they go forward. Second and six, Powell loses a yard. Indianapolis has one timeout left. They'll take it here at 152. Colts go to Tennessee next, the first of three division games. They'll follow that with Jacksonville and then the game at Houston. And that's been the story, John, on the opposite side for the Colts. They have been great in their division the last couple of years, and that has given them the platform to get in the playoffs and make steps here in each of these three years. The wild card game, the division game, the conference championship lost last year to New England. Now they're going to have to go that same route one more time. This will be 10 and 12 against non-division opponents with the loss here tonight. Yeah, and it's very disappointing considering all the noise that they made here with these offseason signees. Guys like Frank Gore, Andre Johnson, they draft Philip Dorsett. In the first round out of Miami, it's almost like they have a surplus of skill players on offense, yet they have been unable to score in an ugly start to the season for the Colts. So Indianapolis out of timeouts, third and seven, Marshall Flinch thing tried to call timeout to cover himself, but he got caught. Full start, offense number 15, five yard penalty, third down. 10 points the deficit, 10 points the Colts normally have. Adam Vinatieri's been about seven years since he missed a field goal inside 30. Frank Gore rarely fumbles going in for a touchdown. That's 10 points right there. Now the Jets may not have been as conservative. When those happen, changes the tenor of the game. But it's 17-7, it's Vinatieri and Gore 
on almost guarantees and nothing is Powell kept the run alive no game there to quote Jackson injured for Indianapolis and their athletic training staff is out right away to check on the veteran Colts linebacker Well, Jackson did get up and walk off under his own power, which is great news. The athletic training staff talking with him as he stands on the sidelines. That's the encouraging news on the Indianapolis side. And now the trainer just walked away. By rule, inside of two minutes, when there's an injured player, Indianapolis has no timeouts to charge, so we will put the play clock at 40 seconds and wind the clock. You see Jackson... So it's three more seconds that the Colts will not have to deal with. Jets will run it down to 102, 103 on the game clock. We'll see if they take a timeout at that point. Got to hope that the Quell Jackson's okay, Mike. They've already lost Monte Davis tonight, their star corner. Can ill afford to lose any more people as they get ready for the Tennessee Titans and the New York Jets, how about the football IQ they have in that huddle? There's a lot of yeah. veterans out there, and that might be the biggest strength they have on offense, their football IQ. Well, people talked about Indominus Sue going to Miami. Brian Tannehill maturing, playing better football towards the end of last year. Obviously, Buffalo and Rex Ryan coming there, and because of the veterans who were here, and we see Fitzpatrick, and we should bring up Geno Smith, the Jets quarterback who was punched in the locker room by IK and Polly, the linebacker of the Jets immediately cut. Uh, Gino is here, as you see, travel with the team, throwing the ball around a little bit, slowly, incrementally starting his practice road back. But Todd Bowles was very clear with us when we talked about it. He said, look, if we're three and three and oh, four and one, we're rolling with Ryan Fitzpatrick, we're not doing anything. If we're one and four and things aren't working, then we'll see where we are and make a quarterback decision. But he's very comfortable with the way things have worked out with Fitzpatrick in charge. So the Jets will try a 46-yard field goal with Nick Folk here with 102 to go. And that makes it 20 to 7. Jets on top by 13. 57 seconds, no timeouts for the Colts. Players like Todd Bowles, and he's a player himself. Matter of fact, the first time the Jets have had a former NFL player as their head coach. He was part of the Super Bowl champion 1987 Washington Redskins. Influences, Doug Williams was the quarterback. I'll talk about Doug in a second there. But the defensive players he played with in the secondary with Darryl Green, guys like Mann and Butts and Manley up front, he said that defense, those are the influences that he had. But John, a guy who you know very well, Doug Williams, the key reason that Todd Bowles, once his playing days were done, transitioned to the coaching era. Yeah, Doug Williams and Todd Bowles worked together in Atlanta, Morehouse College, and then on to Grambling. What I love about Todd Bowles is he's done it the hard way. I mean, he was the interim defensive coordinator in Philadelphia when Juan Castillo got fired on Andy Reid's staff. He was the interim head coach of the Dolphins when Tony Sperano got fired. He's been around some of the best defensive minds in football. He was coached by Emmett Thomas, Hall of Fame player, coached by Ray Rhodes, outstanding defensive coach. And the players respect his blunt 25 words or less style. And by the way, they've got a good team. They, they have do. a lot of good players. Just stand there in the hotel and see how big these guys are, how talented they are at the skill positions. And say what you want, Mike. Ryan Fitzpatrick, almost 70% tonight, two more touchdowns. He knows his Chan Gailey offense. Talk about credit, Mike McCagney, the new GM who took over, replacing John Idzik. Also has done a very good job of player acquisition. The return by Tyler Varga to the 20-yard line. 50 seconds left. Next Monday night, we are in Wisconsin. We are at Lambeau Field. The Chiefs and the Packers will wrap up week three. And on a slate that's a little thin, that's about as good a game as there is out there on the board. Kansas City at Green Bay next Monday night. Countdown 6 Eastern, 5 Central. 
and then we'll be with you at 8.15. So uh, 10 extra minutes, treadmill, elliptical, make room <laughs> for a brat next Monday night. That's great. I can't wait to get to Green Bay. We'll see Aaron Rodgers, of course, the Chiefs with that long week and a half trying to bounce back from their crushing loss to Denver on Thursday night. Final 50 seconds here, and it is Robinson on the outlet for nine. Jets just rushing three. This game over. Trying to make sure nobody else gets hurt. Philadelphia comes to town next week for the Jets. Robinson again out of the backfield to the 34-yard line. Amazing story. This young man, Robinson, out of Mississippi State, spent six months living in the back of a Nissan. After uh, deaths in the family, the people who were helping him grow, grandparents, his dad not in his life, his mom incarcerated, young man ended up with a lot of support, bouncing around 20 different houses at one point, places to live. He's an incredible survival story. Ran for 1,200 yards last year at Mississippi State and finds himself sixth round pick in the league and playing with Andrew Luck and all these other big names on the Colts. And showing good work there as he gets within a yard of the first down, as that should just about do it. The New York Jets, the turnover Kings. They had 10 takeaways to start the season. Ryan Fitzpatrick in the offense. Doing enough, and they beat Indianapolis 20 to 7. The Colts are 0 2 for the second straight year, and the Jets have opened 2 0. Now stay tuned, we have the GMC post game coming up on Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt next. Steve Levy and the crew here. We're going to be right back in Indianapolis to reveal this week's Gruden Grinder from tonight's game. Don't go anywhere. Jets win, Gruden Grinder, then Sports Center in a couple of seconds. <laughs>